a very blessed and wonderful good morning to each and every one of you. And uh, welcome to Wednesday, the 25th of November, 2020, to Peace Through the Word, uh, a ministry of Peace in the Valley Lutheran Church in Benson, Arizona, in the United States of America. Uh, so good to be able to welcome you this morning, uh, the day before Thanksgiving here in the United States, and uh, to be able to share this little time with you <clears throat> for, with uh, the Word. So this morning we're going to, in our devotions, we're going to continue with CF, <clears throat> excuse me, CFW Wather, and we're going to be looking at the subject of preaching Jesus Christ rightly, uh, which uh, gives the connotation that there is the distinct probability of preaching Christ uh unrightly, I, I guess that's a word, and not correctly. Uh, and then, and, and, and there's the, uh, it, it falls under the umbrella of uh, ecumenia, meaning uh, uh, this unification, peace at all costs. Uh, don't rock the boat, don't be a source of offense, don't cause division, uh, accentuate the commonalities and not the uh, divisions. And, and so that's one of the overarching themes that uh, uh, CFW Wather uh, is going to be talking about this morning. And it's important as we uh, travel this journey uh, right uh, preceding Advent, so that we are proclaiming Jesus correctly, preaching Jesus rightly, and also uh, walking in faith rightly, so as not to be a source of confusion. Uh, there's tremendous confusion out there on its own merits. We don't have to help it, <laughs> okay? So I pray that that's going to be a real blessing, uh, as well as an agent of genuine peace to all of us today. So we gather together in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear our voices, and in the morning we prepare a sacrifice for you, and we watch. Our mouths are filled with your praise and with your glory all the day. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouths will declare your praise. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. So, brothers and sisters, the passage of, of Scripture that uh, Dr. C.F.W. Wather is going to unpack for us is Philippians chapter 2. And I'm going to read to you verses 15 through 18 of that text. And uh, listen to these words of St. Paul to the Christian church at Philippi as to how Jesus Christ is to be rightly preached. He says, Some indeed preach Christ from envy and rivalry. That's an improper way to really preach Christ. Uh, from envy and rivalry. But others from goodwill. The latter, those preaching Christ with goodwill, do it out of love, knowing that I am put here for the defense of the gospel. St. Paul was defending the gospel. The former proclaim Christ out of rivalry, not sincerely, but thinking to afflict me in my imprisonment. What then? Only that in every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is proclaimed, and in that I rejoice. God's word for us this morning. So, there's a lot of misunderstanding with regard to this particular passage of Scripture. Because people say, well, see, the bottom line and the, the main thing is that Christ is proclaimed. 
So let's accentuate the commonality and not the division so long as Christ is proclaimed. That's not correct. And so that, uh, CFW Wather is going to talk about that. So let's see what he says. Only that Christ is proclaimed. These words are often heard. But how do people understand them? They think that as long as a preacher confesses in his sermons that Christ is God's son and that he died for people, then this is enough. It does not matter how many errors he may have in regard to other points of Christian doctrine. Today, when a Christian insists upon pure doctrine and declines to have fellowship with false teachers and heterodox churches, people respond, have you not read what St. Paul writes to the Philippians? Doesn't he say only that Christ is proclaimed? Paul was no narrow-minded man like you. He was satisfied if a preacher only proclaimed Christ. He declared this to be the main thing. Every other doctrine was of only secondary importance for him, and differences could be expected amongst Christians where they were concerned. Paul maintained fellowship with those who merely proclaimed Christ, and he declared them to be his brothers, even if they deviated from him in other articles of faith. See, and that's the argument that's made. So why are you straining at this and thinking that you're so better than everybody else where you can, uh, you know, uh, complain a, a, a against what they're doing? You know, basically. Well, many well-intentioned people allow themselves to be deceived by this exposition of Paul's words. They believe they stand upon the foundation of the word of God, even when they do not hold fast to pure doctrine, choosing instead to participate in the outward union now established among various churches that are not unified in all articles of faith. Consider what Paul writes in the verses that precede today's reading. Some indeed preach Christ from envy and rivalry, but others from goodwill. The latter do it out of love. The former proclaim Christ out of rivalry, not sincerely, but thinking to afflict me in my imprisonment. To this he adds, what then? Only that in every way Christ is proclaimed, and in that I rejoice. Is Paul really saying here that it does not matter if a person preaches Christ purely or if he preaches him with false doctrine? Of course not. Instead, as the context reveals, Paul is stressing that Christ is preached with a variety of intentions. Some preach him rightly and purely out of love, while others preach him rightly and purely while they are motivated by insincerity, envy, and strife. The evil intention of some preachers does not make their good preaching of Christ evil or powerless. The preacher himself is certainly reprehensible, but his confession of Christ is not. It remains the power of God to save all who believe in it, for this reason only that Christ is proclaimed. As sad as it is for the one who preaches Christ insincerely, we can still rejoice over the souls who are led to salvation by it. Paul confirms our interpretation with what he says elsewhere. To the Galatians who are hearing about Christ with false doctrines mixed in, he writes, a little leaven leavens the whole lump. And you are severed from Christ, you who would be justified by the law. You have fallen away from grace. We can clearly see from this that it is not enough that Christ is preached. He must also be preached rightly and purely, for there is also a false Christ. So, God's word for us this morning. So, CFW Wather again is addressing this embracement of false Christs. And we need to be preaching the real, true Christ maintaining right doctrine, okay? So we don't get on this 
peace at all cost bandwagon. You know, Jesus never tells us to do that. He says, come out from amongst them and be ye separate and touch not the unclean thing. So he doesn't advocate peace at all costs and, you know, avoid confrontation. He doesn't. Nor does he accentuate uh, this idea of, well, let's just come together. <laughs> let's just have kumbaya. <laughs> you know, can't we get along? You know, he wants his church to be a church of integrity, maintaining proper doctrine, beliefs, and practice. So what does that mean? What does that look like? What, how is that brought about? by being grounded in the word of God. Where people get sideways is they're relying on, on this, their human reason and their own uh, particular biasness. And so they, they'll, they'll look at scripture and they'll say, well, I don't buy that. <laughs> like, okay, so that validates or invalidates Holy Scripture because you just don't want to buy into it? Mm -mm. You see, people have to come to the grips where they get over themselves. Who are we worshiping? Jesus or ourselves? So that's the underlying. Uh, by doing that, we can have real genuine peace. Really can. In the midst of very chaotic world and situations. <laughs> We've got them. But we can have genuine, real peace. And that's what Jesus promises he says, I give you genuine, real peace. Not as the world gives, but as I give. Meaning, I'm going right with you, right through chaos, and difficulties, and challenges, and stuff. And so, whatever it is you're going through this morning, whatever it might be, whether it's health, economics, relationships, whatever it might be, you can still have genuine peace knowing that Jesus is going through with you right in the midst of those challenges. And that's comforting. Right? I pray you're going to be blessed. So brothers and sisters, we want to profess the Christian faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. And so together we profess. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and he sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. So brothers and sisters, on this beautiful Wednesday morning, let's together pray the wonderful prayer our Lord taught us, the Lord's Prayer. And so together we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, who created and completed all things, on this day when the work of our calling begins anew, we implore you to create its beginning direct its continuance, and bless its end, that our doings may be preserved from sin and our lives sanctified in our work this day be well-pleasing to you through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We thank you, our Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept us this night from all harm and danger, and we pray that you would keep us this day also from sin and every evil, that all of our doings in life may please you, for into your hands we commend ourselves, our bodies and souls, in all things. Let your holy angel be with us, that the evil foe may have no power over us. Amen. So brothers and sisters, let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
Well, brothers and sisters, again, uh, so good to be able to share the brief time this morning with you with peace through the word. Uh, it's a beautiful way to begin our day. And I thank you for allowing us that privilege to join you together today, wherever you may be worldwide. So we have wonderful blue skies today, just a beautiful day here in Southern Arizona. I am aware that in some parts of the world, it's not that way. There's still a, a lot of uh, stuff going on in Central America with regard to the hurricane and so on and so forth. But wherever you may be, whatever you're experiencing today, and Jesus is there with you and he's going to give you genuine real peace. So I pray that uh, the wheels are up, the flaps have been retracted. It's a good day to walk with your Lord and I convey all of it in abundance and look forward to being with you again tomorrow morning from my study uh, in my residence in Sun City, Oro Valley. So until we meet again, uh, God's blessings and tremendous blue skies. Amen. Amen.